hey y'all hey welcome back to my channel so i hope you guys are enjoying these notary documents let's get into it so today we're going to be discussing a purchase agreement so if you're a loan signing agent then you will be required to do purchase agreements. So there's a lot of different packets that you would do sellers, purchases. Um, it just depends uh, what type of packet they might. It might be a loan modification. It might be something a little longer, like a reverse mortgage. Either way, this is going to be a purchase agreement. So ultimately, you don't have to dis describe these documents in full detail. But what you do have to do is kind of give them a one-liner, kind of just tell them the gist of what the document is they're signing. And they themselves, if they want, can go into it and read what they want to read about the document itself. But ultimately, you're just giving them a roundabout as to what the document is about. And normally that is good enough, but I have had appointments where they wanted to read the entire thing and ultimately it's their right. So let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So we'll start here with the note. Now, this is basically just a promissory note where an individual is promising to pay the loan and the interest back. So that's pretty much what that is. You'll let them know that. And then you'll come down and then they would sign it. So they would sign. And as you can see, I've taken all the, the personal information because this is really somebody's loan documents. So I kind of whited out all of their information. So it'll be a little crappy looking, but you're going to get the gist of what the documents are. So their name will be printed here. So they would sign here however their name is put here. So if they have first, middle, and last, that's how they want them to sign. And however they sign on these documents, they need to sign consistently throughout the entire packet. Never put a date. Well, you let them know never put a date unless it's asked. So you see out here, it just says seal. Seal just means their signature. It's not asking for a date, so they do not need to put a date. And certain documents don't have a date for a reason. So don't add anything extra to these documents. They will send them back and make you go and do them for free. So have them go ahead and sign here, and that's it. And you will come down here to the next page. And this is basically just a borrower's affidavit. And it's basically just the borrower saying that they have not done anything to affect the title of the property. And they're not in currently in a divorce or any kind of bankruptcy. Anything that could affect the title. So this is them saying, yes, I'm not doing any of that. They would sign their name here. And it would be printed. You would come here and you would notarize it. So you, of course, would put your state, your county, the day that you are completing these documents. You would sign your name, stamp, and put the day your commission expires. Now, if you notice, at the end of some of these pages, it's this little barcode thing. Because in the beginning, before the original documents are legal size documents so when i printed these out just to teach you i printed them out just a regular letter size but when you're a loan signing agent you have a printer that prints legal and letter size papers and your computer your printer and your computer will talk together and print these documents out the correct size and this is how they would know if they were printed out correctly is this little thing would be at the end of each page. So that's how they would know. So if it's not there, they're going to know that you didn't print it out on the right size. So you can't get around that. You need to print it out the right size. So let's go ahead and get on to the next one. So this is the deed of trust. Now you see here, I put 10 pages because this had 10 pages behind it. And normally deed of trust, mortgages all 
Those are 10 to 15 pages. I did not make copies of all of those because ultimately it was just information about this person's loan that you didn't need access to anyway. But I'm just letting you know behind this deed of trust is 10 pages. And basically if they wanted to, they could read it. But I think probably once I had somebody actually read through the whole 10 pages. But other than that, the deed of trust is just an agreement between the buyer and the lender saying that the buyer will repay the loan and the le the, uh, the lender will hold the legal title of the property for the actual property. They're going to hold the title until the entire loan is repaid. So this is just them agreeing to, to that stipulation and then other small stipulations that will be included. But this is, oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I didn't even fill this one out. I thought I did. But this is the back page of the actual, um, the deed of trust. And so that person would sign their name here. You see, it's asking for a date. They would date here. And then what? So somehow, I guess it, I did fill it out, but it just didn't show up because I can see the line through. So as you can see, these documents were done in a different state. So. For every single one that has a state and the, the county already put in there, it's up to you to cross out, put your initials, and write the correct words here. And you'll see on my other documents that I've done it. So this would be Florida, Hillsboro, and here it says before me. And me, remember when it says me, it's your name. And it's when it says by, it's their name. So you see it says by, their name was there. And that's the name of the person being acknowledged. And this here, me would be me. And then here was the actual date, but it's not showing up. I apologize. So then the notary would sign here. Commission expiration date here. And the stamp would go here. And that would be the signature page. And so you can see here on the next page, it actually shows up. And so you can see I draw one line, not scribbling, one line through the word Virginia. I write Florida and I initial that I put this scratch through there. And then the county was wrong also. So one line, initials, and the correct county. So now this is the affidavit of occupancy. And it's basically uh, used to confirm the property that's being financed will be the primary residence for this person. So basically, it would already be checked. But if it's not checked, then that person would check it that this is going to be the primary residence. Their name would be here. So they would sign as stated. And then they would go ahead and date it. And remember when you have them date, remember to tell them to date the entire year, not just 22, but 2022. So you need to tell them that information in the very beginning, because that will just keep you from having to redo these. Because ultimately when you print these documents out, you're printing out two sets. One is theirs and one is yours that you're going to turn back into the title company. So if they make a mistake, you need to take one of those blank ones out of theirs, replace it, and have them do it the correct way. And the one that they made a mistake on, can give you can give that back to them for them to keep. So once again, they will sign, date, and you will move on. And this is the actual um, the notarization of this form. So they're signing here. And then once again, you'll draw the line through it. You'll put the correct state and county. You'll put the date and that person's name would be here, but I, I whited it out. And then here you would sign your name. You see that line under here, even though it's nothing under that line, we know as loan signing agents that your name needs to be printed there. So that's what that line is for. So your signature is here. Your printed name is here and your commission expiration date is here accompanied by your um your stamp so don't forget that that line is going to be for your for your actual printed name okay and let's see we went over the occupancy and then here this is the initial escrow disclosure and it's just basically 
list of specific charges that you will pay each month, like with the escrow and your actual part of your mortgage or whatever. This is basically just showing you the charges. So this would be what's being paid into your escrow. And then, so this would be basically your balance as it goes up throughout that entire year. So it'll be like the first year of those charges, okay? And then you'll come here and they would sign it. And this page here looks horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> but for whatever reason, when I made a copy of it, it looks like this. And ultimately, because I did it front and back. So you can kind of see the back. So long story short, they're going to sign their name and they're going to put a date there. Okay. And then you'll come here. And this is the signature name affidavit. This is used to protect the lender and the title company from fraud. It's basically just saying that your legal name is your legal name and that this is your legal signature. And any name they might have looked up online that they found, they'll print that there. But you will go ahead, your name will be printed. That person's name will be printed there. I apologize. So they would sign and date here. You as the notary would come and notarize this part of the document with the correct state and county, your date, their name would be here. You would once again write your expiration date. You would sign and you would stamp. Okay. And then you would come here and this is the Patriot Act right here. This document is filled out by you, by the loan signing agent. So remember, whenever you don't stamp a document, you're not a loan signing agent. You're just, a, I'm sorry, you are a loan sign. You're not a notary public. You're an actual signing agent. So when you get ready to sign this, you're not going to sign it as a notary. You're going to sign it as a signing agent. Remember that whenever your stamp is not required, you're not a notary. Okay. So once again, this is the Patriot Act and it just kind of helps the government fight funding for terrorism and like money laundering. So it just kind of requires all financial institutions obtain and verify and record verification for every person. So it's pretty much just the gist of that. So you would just kind of summarize that up for them. And here, sometimes it says two documents, but this form says only one form of verification is required. So some of them say two, some say one. So they can basically, if they have, which of course they had to show you some kind of identification, which would be their driver's license or passport or something like that. So you would write the information off of that identification here. So you would X that they give you the driver's license. You would write the state of the driver's license, the country. You would write the ID, which is their driver's license number the day it was issued, and the expiration date. And that would be kind of it. So, and then ultimately, if it asks for a second form of identification, then it would be one of these things. And you, once again, would just write the, the information off of that form. And then here is where you would sign your name. You, as the signing agent, would print your name. And you would write the title, which is signing agent. And you're going to write that day. And then here, this is the compliance agreement, which basically the borrower agrees to comply with the request from the lender and the closing agents to correct any typos after the loan has closed. So if they find anything that was misspelled or out of order after the loan is closed, you're giving them permission to go ahead and fix it. So that's just the compliance of it all. So the date, the person would write the date here. And their name is going to be printed there. They're going to sign their name and they're going to write their date. And then when you come down here, you don't have to cross anything out. You're going to write state, county, date. Remember me? Where it says before me, that's me. So the signing agent's name will go here and then personally appeared. And then the person's name would be here. So it was there. I took it out. You come here, your expiration date of your stamp i mean of your commission and your stamp you would stamp here you would sign your name here so these documents come from virginia so this normally would be the notary public that would be signing this 
But in Virginia, I guess it would be the title officer. So you would just draw one line through it. Initially, write notary public because you are not notarizing anything that you are not signing. That's how you are notarizing it. So you can't notarize this, this signature without you signing. So you draw that line through it. You write your title, which is notary public. You sign your name. And you'll come down here. And this is the first payment letter. So this basically just shows the amount of the monthly principal, the interest, along with like the escrow and any insurances that are needed monthly for this loan. So every state is different when it comes to different um, insurances. So it just depends on which ones that have to be included. So basically it's an itemization of all of them right here. And this would be the final amount that that person would have to pay monthly. And any kind of stipulations that they have. You see like here it says the lender will not accept any partial payments. So if they did accept it, it would be X here. So they basically can just go through this, look at the amount, make sure it's what they agreed upon. The amount here is correct. Their interest rate, everything is correct what they agreed upon. And then they'll just go ahead and sign it and date it. And that will be the end. And basically this is not all the documents. This is all of the key documents that are going to be in the purchase agreement. Will there be more? Yes, there will be more. But you're basically just going to kind of name them off. They'll sign them. But these are the important ones that you need to know and be able to give them one-liners just to kind of explain what the document is. If you can't explain anything, they feel like you don't know what you're doing. So ultimately, if you're just starting out, you want to get you some index cards Write these little one-liners down that I just gave you so that you will know at least these documents in there. And once you can explain these, the person that's signing feels a lot more confident that you know what you're doing because you're the professional, right? All righty. Well, thank you so very much. And I hope you guys enjoyed going over these documents and I hope you learned some things and you got you some different tips. And... Just look for some more documents. I might do another um, loan signing packet because you guys seem to enjoy it. And then I'll get back to doing my general notary. So you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye.